I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that the meeting has been duly called, and that a notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. It is 6 p.m. If you would stand with me, uh, Mr. Sanders is going to lead us in the invocation and Mrs. Bush in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please bow with me. Oh, gracious Lord, we are thankful for the rain that you have provided to us. We are thankful for the many, many blessings in which you have provided to us. And we pray your blessings upon our school district, upon our staff, our administration, and all that are a part of our teaching and, and educating our students to make them successful in life. We pray that you would give us discernment tonight to do your business. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the Texas flag. Honor, honor, honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the United States, one state, under God, one indivisible. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Sanders and Mrs. Bush. Um, welcome to the May meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees. We are uh, pleased at the crowd and excited for all the good news tonight. Uh, Dr. Stockton, item 2A, Special District Recogni Recognition Star. At this time, I'll ask Veronica Martin, our college readiness specialist, to come to the podium and introduce our very special students. Good evening, Mr. Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. This evening, we recognize and celebrate our graduating STAR students. First, we must begin with the most intricate part of our students' success, their parents. At this time, we would like for all of our STAR student parents to stand at this time. Thank you for coming and celebrating with us this evening. This group of students have been led by a remarkable group of, 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 sorry, of counselors. The students have participated in various activities through their four years of high school. The counselors meet with the STAR students on a regular basis to give them their support as it relates to their academics, jobs and careers, and post-secondary opportunities. Annually, the students participate in the Rose Challenge course to promote leadership, team building, and character development. Over the course of four years, the, student, the STAR students have visited colleges and universities such as the University of Houston Central, University of Houston Downtown, University of St. Thomas, Lone Star College North Harris, Navarro College, Prairie View A&M, and a host of others. We have conducted, conducted an exit survey from the two, uh, for the 2015 graduating class. The results indicated 64% of our students are first generation. 86% of our students says that they have gotten to know adults from their campus and district through this program. We asked how they viewed their future and how it has changed over the years. These are some of those responses. I'm actually graduating. One says, I really see myself attending college. School has been hard for me, but with effort, anything is possible. Things have opened up for me. Now I know I can afford to go to a four-year college. I didn't think I would get this far. Now I'm going to college. After graduation, 59% are going to a two-year college, 23% are going to a four-year college, 5% are going into the military, four enter the workforce, four plan to attend a technical college, and then we have five that are undecided. Some of the colleges of interest are University of Houston, Lone Star, Texas Southern University, Blinn College, Sam Houston, Autonoma, Guadalajara, Texas A&M University, and that's just to name a few. Some career interests include culinary, pharmacy, law enforcement, engineering, education. One wants to be an administrator, and another wants to be a counselor. Auto technology, nursing, and cosmetology, and there's so many more others. 38% of our students have applied for financial aid, and several have received scholarships. The Gallo, the Gallo Scholarship, the Honor College Chancellor Fellow, 
Bar Association, Eastern Star, Migrant Scholarship, Gamma Kappa, Skills USA, and Whitaker Woman. They all have received those scholarships. We have about three students that are going to speak to us tonight, and they're going to speak of their experiences with the STAR program. The first student that we're going to have to come to the podium is Justin McWashington from Conroe High School. <laughs> Good evening, members of the board and Dr. Stockton. Um, I'm here on behalf of Conroe High and telling you how amazing the STAR program is and how much it's affected my life in a positive way. Um, see, I heard about this word of ear. Like, it just flew in. I was sitting in class and I was like, kids are doing the rope course. I was like, I know where that is. Yes. So uh, <laughs> I've never personally been back there, but I actually went and checked it out after that. Um, and I seen what they were doing. Uh, during lunch, I went out there and watched them and all the teamwork they had and all like the bonding, I want to be a part of that. And me being a positive person, I wanted to bring my positivity to a already positive group, see if I can like help it out and see what I can do it with my with my personal being. Um, and Ms. Lipscomb, our wonderful counselor, she she just like pulled me in and said, hey, this would be best for you. We go to these colleges, we do this, we do this, and all she had to say was college, and I was with it. I was like, yes, college is where I want to go. Um, I think the, the most memorable time is when we went to, I think it's Lone Star North Harris. We had we went in the meeting room, and it was just like sparks were flying. There was positivity here. Like everyone there was like, "Hey, college is the best thing." And before that, I was like, "You know what? If I don't go to college, I might have to struggle, but I'll make it." I realized that if you don't go to college, you're not really going to do anything. I was like, "That's not okay." So by me going there and then being positive and showing me the better way. That's the what I want to be. I want to be somebody positive that helps my community any way possible. So that's why I love the STAR program. Thank you, Justin. The next student we have from Oak Ridge High School, Remy Bourne. Hello. Members of the board and Dr. Stockton, I'm from Oak Ridge High School. My name is Remy Bourne. I'm a part, I've been a part of the STAR group since freshman year. Um, one of my counselors called me in and I wasn't really sure what it was about. And we, then we started having more meetings and I kind of realized, you know, college, you know, it might be a good thing because before the STAR groups and before high school, I, you know, I'm from a family of 10 kids. And so I figured, you know, financial is going to be hard. <laughs> And so um, coming into this group, it helped me realize there's financial aid, there's scholarships, there's a lot more things than to just worry about financial difficulties. And so looking into more colleges, I feel so crazy. I've um, actually uh, qualified for a full ride scholarship for Lone Star, the honor scholarship, the one she mentioned. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So um, it's really exciting. I've actually heard about it through the STAR program. Um, I'm. Uh, the most thing I've gotten from the program was learning that college is a, is a way to go and that it's not just about financial problems. So I really like the SARC program and I thank everyone who put it together. Thank you. Thank you, Remy. The next person we have coming up from Woodlands High School, Aaliyah Mitchell. Good evening, members of the board and Dr. Stockton. I first want to thank you guys for making all this happen and letting me come and speak tonight. Um, I was introduced to the STAR program by several of the counselors at the ninth grade campus my first year. And at first, I was just, I kind of thought, like, no, I don't want to do it. They're just going to stress college on us more, and teachers and parents do that enough as is. And <laughs> at first, that was part of the reason why I didn't want to go. It just seemed too stressful. I didn't want to be a part of it. But I gave it a chance anyways. Um, and I don't regret it at all. I've recruited very many people from my school to join, including my own sister and best friend. My sister recruited one of her best friends to join. We've visited a lot of schools that I really enjoyed going to, especially U of H and Prairie View A&M. Prairie View A&M was one of my biggest options for a while. For a couple of years to go to, I liked that it was a small community and it was in a small town. The homes to live in looked like actual homes, so it didn't seem like you were at college. You felt like you were at home. That's one of my biggest things. I don't like being away from home. Um, I learned also that like financial aid was is a 
great thing for college. It's amazing that almost anybody can apply for it. It's definitely something my family needs coming from a single mom with two teenage girls. That's pretty hard to live with and we've had our struggles, but being in this program and learning all the different opportunities to make or earn money for college definitely changed my views on it and all the support and um, positivity that everyone has brought in made college a lot easier for me to choose. So with STAR program, they helped me decide that I do want to go to Lone Star Montgomery campus and then transfer to Texas A&M for forensics and criminal justice. Ooh. So. I just wanted to thank everybody for making that possible and changing my eyesight on college. Thank you, Aaliyah. Now we're going to have the counselor from Caney Creek and we'll start giving out our certificates. Good evening. Um, we have a great group of students here at Caney Creek I've been privileged to work with and I'm very proud of all their hard work. Our first student we're going to recognize this evening is Martin Alfaro. Our second student is Christian Austin. Next is Brooke Fly. Jose Ruiz. And Gabriel Trujillo. Good evening to the board members and Dr. Stockton. I'm the counselor for Conroe High School and our first member is Jesus Morales. Our next member is Justin McWashington. Our next student is Justin Suarez. And our last student is Kobe Young. Good evening, I'm Sigurd Woods. I'm the counselor from Hawk Academic Alternative. From Hawk, we have Nathan Benitez. <laughs> Michelle Goff. <laughs> Bailey Hamner. Cheyenne King. <laughs> Kayla King. <laughs> and Jordan Mack. Good evening, my name is Sheila Dokes and I am the counselor from Oak Ridge High School. And this evening I have with me our brightest shining star student and that is Remy Bourne. Hello, I'm 
Vicki Woods Hinkle uh, from the Woodlands College Park, and I'd like to recognize our students. Adriana Garcia. <laughs> Ruth Espinoza Ponce. And Andrea Carrion Garcia. Hi, I'm Kelly Stewart uh, representing the Woodlands High School, and our first Bright Star student is Aaliyah Mitchell. And next we have Matthew Ognisti. <laughs> and Yoslin Sanchez. This is the graduating group for 2015 star students. I'll be brief. Uh, on behalf of the board, we just want to say uh, congratulations for a job well done. Um, it's hard work, isn't it? Yes, but you did it. And because you did it, you set an example for our district, for future people. I appreciate you recruiting your sister and your sister recruiting others. So that's what we like about this program and uh, the positive benefit that we heard about tonight. And so I just wanna say again on behalf of the board, congratulations. You're first. Because all <laughs> Congratulations. Well, it would be real easy. It would be real easy to uh, end on a good note, but guess what? That's not the only good note we have at CISD tonight, okay? So as everybody exits uh, it's part of that program, we're going to call um, item 2B, Special District Recognition for our Child Nutrition Ambassador Awards, Dr. Stockton. You can wait a minute if you wish. Yeah, you might want to let a little bit of that go on. Sorry about that. I jumped the gun. That's all right. No. That's all right. Go ahead. Give me just a minute so you okay. can be heard. Okay. 
Well, that certainly was worth the wait. Wow, um, that's awesome. Okay, this time I'd like to <laughs> invite Robin Hughes to the front to introduce our Child Nutrition Ambassador Awards. Okay. Good evening, members of the board and Dr. Stockton. Thank you for the opportunity to recognize our Child Nutrition Ambassador Award winners. Our first recipient is Ms. Melissa Valdivias. Melissa is the cafeteria manager at Runyon Elementary. She has nine years of service with the district. She works well under any circumstances, and she's always professional. She's patient, and she works well with the staff. She can handle any situation, and she gets the job done right. She, she's an asset to our team. Our next recipient is Ms. Aska Ashley. Aska is an associate at Oak Ridge High School ninth grade campus. She's been with the district since 2011. She's very knowledgeable in food preparation. She takes it upon herself to help others even when uh, they don't ask. She pays close attention to details and gets along with everyone. We're lucky to have her in CISD. Thank you. Well, ladies, on behalf of Dr. Stockton and the Board of Trustees, we just want to say thank you for all that you do. You guys are truly unsung heroes in our district. And and keep in mind, always keep in mind that your work is, is, is always appreciated and um, you are essential to the team here. We just really appreciate all that you do. So thanks a lot, guys. Item 2C, Special District District Recognition Transportation Ambassador Awards. You know, children that are hungry don't learn, and children that don't come to school can't learn. So we're very appreciative of both of these groups tonight. Dr. Stockton. At this time, I'll invite Sam Davila, our Director of Transportation, to the podium. Good afternoon, Mr. Husband, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. It's my distinct pleasure to uh, announce or uh, recognize this year's uh, Ambassador Awards. I'd like to start off first with, uh, from our Woodlands Transportation Center, uh, Mr. Scott Leatherwood. <laughs> He's going all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> Scott is uh, actually one of our technicians at uh, the Woodlands Transportation Center, uh, but he does that part-time, his full-time job as bus driver, it seems like. Uh, Scott's one of those gentlemen that is always willing to help out. He runs a route in the morning, run it in the p.m., and then work on the buses in the middle of the day, and uh, we just can't function without folks like Scott that, that, that are there to help us do the mission, and we appreciate everything Scott does, and he does it without complaining, so that's a bonus for us. Uh, the next person I'd like to introduce is Sandy Cobb. <laughs> Sandy kind of operates out of all the centers. Um, she goes wherever she's needed. Uh, more recently, we've needed her to actually help us with a difficult route, and um, and she excels at doing that as far as uh, caring for the kids, helping them understand that there's a, 
the way to ride the bus and particularly <laughs> is her, our special needs kids and she has that way with them and anytime we have a difficult route we know we can call on Sandy. Now she left us and then we brought her back in. And so I think we got her stuck on this route right now. Uh, she loves her kids and her kids love her. So a wonderful person. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Anna Snow. She's from our East County Transportation Center. <laughs> Anna has been a godsend as far as uh, <laughs> helping morale out. Uh, she's always a positive, always uplifting. Uh, she uh, actually with our company picnic this year. Uh, her and her husband, Greg, back there, uh, I guess he's still here, there he is, helped us with actually cooking, and we had a survivor theme for our transportation this year, and uh, they just took it and ran with it, and had shish kebabs, and they went all out, but more than that, Anna is a trooper, she's always there, and she helps people feel happy about coming to work, and has done so much at the East County Center to uh, uplift morale and do things that you know a lot of us are not able to do so I really appreciate everything Anna's done for us mm -hmm. and Sam thanks for inviting the board to the dinner yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was our ninth annual so 10's gonna be big next year right that's right. Um, last but not least, and I'm going to try to get through this without getting too emotional, but um, Mr. Herman Reese. <laughs> what can I say about Herman? Um, we've been together a long time. 18. Um, I'm sorry. Um, uh, when I first started in transportation, Herman was at our Del Mar Center in Houston. So we've known each other a long time. You want me to? Let me this I love it. Dr. Stockton and board members, 18 years ago, I met two men, a tall and a short one. <laughs> we were at HISD at the time, and I just retired from Metro, and so I'm just going to go chill out. And uh, down the school bus my first time, and I was still getting a good route. I didn't know. So I walked in the door, handed me a route, the boot camp route. For 18 years, I've worked in boot camp routes. 18 years. You all have realized what our drivers go through with those kids. Parents teach them at home to respect the drivers. They're the first thing to see in the morning and the last thing at night. So please, honor your kids, teach them to respect the drivers. And to Sam, we go back a long ways. I remember we had a strike one time in ATC. You won't go there. Yeah, I went to go. <laughs> We were, we, were, we were going for more money. So Sam and his group, they were hiding behind the building, peeping. <laughs> so Channel 13 was there. I said, look, daddy over there, get them right there, get them right there. Sure, put that camera away, would you? Do y'all know we got that money? The next day, thanks to you, Sam. <laughs> you know. And by, by the way, the only way they got off the bus, I got sick. And that was the only way they got off the bus. But you're still with us. I know that's right.
certainly something hard to follow, but let me just say, some of the best times you have in school are on the school bus, and some of the most frustrating times I've had in my career are on the school bus as a bus driver for students. So I certainly understand your pain. Thank you guys for what you do for our kids, and we appreciate your service to our district. Thank you. I guess the only appropriate word for that is a blessing. So, uh, anyway, Madam Secretary, do we uh, have anybody signed up to, for citizen participation? Very good. Okay. I'm going to uh, exercise the privilege of the, the President and move item 9A, naming of the principal of San Houston <laughs> Elementary School, up to now. Dr. Stockton? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Husbands. Um, the board members, as you know, one of the most important things I do is recommend principal uh, principles to you for your consideration and I'm pleased to make two recommendations tonight first one at Sam Houston Elementary School and that is Christina Upshaw mr. president I move we approve as presented we have a motion to I hear a second second and a second any discussion all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. Like sign opposed. And congratulations, Ms. Upshaw. <laughs> President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. I'm honored and humbled by the opportunity to serve our students, staff, and our community. And I'm thankful for your confidence and trust. It is truly a blessing, and I'm excited about the great things we will accomplish together at San Houston Elementary. I would like to thank the many mentors who continually demonstrate what it means to be a leader, and my family for their steadfast support. Today with me, I have my husband, Saul. You would <laughs> My parents, Julie and Elton, my brother, Jason, and his wife, Jennifer, my sister-in-law, Edith, her husband, Ethan, and their boys, Jake and Josh. I could not, I could not do it without them, and I thank you again for your support. And item 9 uh, B, naming of the principal of Giesinger Elementary School, Dr. Stock. Okay, I'm also very excited to make this recommendation, and I'd like to recommend Melissa Hammond for the position of principal at Giesinger Elementary School. Thank you. And I would like the honor of making that motion if somebody else would second it, please. I'd be glad to second that motion. Thank you. And um, any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. 
like sign opposed, and congratulations, Ms. <laughs> President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. I am honored for this opportunity to serve as principal at Peace Singer Elementary. I am a very proud high school graduate of Conroe ISD. I am a proud parent of three children attending schools in Conroe ISD, and I am proud of the 15 years that I've served as an educator in our district. I am honored and privileged to serve the community, the staff, the parents, and the teachers F.D. Singer Elementary. Thank you. I have my husband, Reed Hammond. My children, Claire, Caroline, and Trey. My nephew, Sebastian. My mother-in-law, uh, Susan Hammond. My parents, Jay and Bonnie Friesen. My brother, Brandon. Thank you. You are free to leave, by the way, unless you would like to stay. <laughs> I think there's a restaurant calling you somewhere. Probably. Uh, make or buy. <laughs> well, after all that excitement, uh, it, uh, it's a little hard to get down to business, but uh, we shall try. Uh, item three is the consent agenda. You've had that for a number of days. Does anybody wish to remove an item to our discussion? Otherwise, I would uh, entertain a motion. 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 Second. And a second. All those uh, in favor signify by raising your right hand. Like sign opposed. Thank you very much. Item 4A, Dr. Stockton Wells uh, Fargo Grant, excuse me, 2015. I'll ask Dr. Hines, Deputy Superintendent, to come present that grant, please. Good evening, <clears throat> President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, tonight, I'm here to request permission to apply for uh, the Wells Fargo grant. Uh, the Wells Fargo grant is a grant that promotes academic achievement, particularly geared for uh, students that are economically disadvantaged. And its uh, priority emphasis is through kindergarten through 12th grade, and also to provide training for teachers. And um, the projects that our committee is recommending um, is that we purchase six, uh, if we're awarded the grant, to uh, purchase six Chromebook carts. Uh, Chromebooks are the same devices we use in that grant with uh, Washington. This would be two uh, carts for each of the intermediate schools in the, this, this round we're targeting Bosman, Cryer, and Travis Intermediate. And so we're asking um, your permission to apply for this grant. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, Rick, uh, raise your right hand. Like, sign, opposed. Thank you very much. Thank Dr. you. Hines. <clears throat> Item 5A, mm -hmm. uh, approve uh, change order for um, outdoor court renovations in Conroe Transportation Center. Dr. Scott. Okay, this time I'll invite Easy Foster, our Director of Planning Construction, to the podium for the next three items. President, husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, tonight. Uh, I bring forward for your approval an amendment to the CM at risk agreement with Dean Co Construction, which is our CM, our construction manager, for the Oak Ridge School Road project. Oak Ridge School Road has been completed and we've realized savings from that project, and we're going to apply these savings towards the amendment that we're going to talk about tonight. We're proposing work to improve an outdoor court service at OA Rees Elementary, and we're replacing an outdoor court service at Lamar Elementary. The court at Lamar Elementary is just is being replaced because it's suffered some root undermining. So it's got it's an asphalt surface that has uh, bumps and uh, and other tripping hazards in it. We're also working with our transportation department to improve the access driveway from the Conroe Transportation Center back gate to the I-45 feeder road. We're widening this drive and the gates to allow two-way bus traffic along this driveway. 
Total cost for this work is $549,179. We're applying $110,318 of savings from the Oak Ridge School Road Project. The contract will be amended by a net total of $652,000, oh, uh, a net total of $438,861, and the funding is allocated through the general fund. At this time, I ask for your approval. I hear a motion. So move approval. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Um, item 5B. Uh, Approval of the guaranteed maximum price of multi campus uh, renovations. Uh, Mr. Foster. Right now, I'd like to request your approval for an amendment to the CM at risk agreement with GTT. Uh, GTT, as a CM or construction manager for the multi campus center re renovations, we're going to call last summer's renovations phase one. It's where we replaced um, several or rectally removed several skylights from several of our, our buildings where the skylights had reached the end of their service life. Uh, phase one was completed, and we realized savings from phase one, and, and that savings is being used towards phase two. In addition to the skylights that we were removed from phase one, we also did some parking lot uh, lighting upgrades to the front doors of those campuses, uh, six campuses in total. Phase two will address bus loop lighting on the back side of those buildings, and as well is going to continue into uh, skylight replacements for six additional campuses. The total cost for phase two is $871,301, of which we're applying $271,305 of savings from phase one. The contract is to be amended and will increase by a net total of $652,274. Funding for this work is allocated in the 2008 bond fund, and at this time I request your approval. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions? Discussion? I do have one quick question. Um, on the new six buildings that we're replacing the skylights, are we doing any of the lighting work or is that just the skylights portion? In areas where we're removing skylights? Yeah, the new. We are supplementing with interior light. Mm -hmm. In areas where we're re replacing an existing skylight, um, no lighting. Right. No, I mean, you said that at the six campuses that we did last year, we also did the lighting to the front door area on the exterior of the building. Are we doing the exterior lighting on the six ones that we're doing the skylights this year? Well, the, the six campuses that get skylight replacements this year do uh -huh. not have the same parking lot. Okay. So there's just not a, it's, it's not an issue at these six campuses. That is correct. Okay. Awesome. Any other questions? Thank you. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you very much. And item C, capital improvement update, uh, Mr. Foster. As we do each month, I'd like to give you an update for our capital improvements that we have in progress throughout the district. Now we're going to start at the beginning. <laughs> Starting with Oak Ridge High School ninth grade campus. Uh, this campus mm -hmm. is on schedule. The construction here, as you recall, is to add some classrooms, mm -hmm. add uh, science labs, add art labs, add uh, reconfigure the admin, and increase the cafeteria space. Like I said, the project is on schedule. It is scheduled to turn over for start of school next year. What you're looking at here is the interior of the newly expanded library area. So as, as this is the, the last area to start the internal inside work. Uh, the classroom portions, you're starting to see the gray walls turn white, so the finishes are beginning. As I said before, this, this building is on schedule, so we're right where we need to be. Uh, rain has affected the exterior brickwork, but we've got two crews working on the job trying to make hay when the sun is shining. <laughs> uh, but we still have plenty of time to finish, finish the exterior. At Oak Ridge Elementary, uh, we're uh, installing the brick as the, the weather will allow us on the exterior of that building. As you can see, uh, we've got a large amount of the, the big equipment, which is what we needed the uh, mechanical room additions for. The equipment for this campus has been delivered. It is on site. So this project is also on schedule. Uh, the interesting part, the work really turns 
inside where it gets really intense when the summer break happens. Uh, students and faculty leave for the summer break. We will move in. We're again removing the ceilings, adding the fire sprinkler systems, adding the other systems, and updating the mechanical systems as part of this project. It is on schedule, and we are uh, set to complete before we start school next year. Good job. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Good job. Thank you. Uh, item 6A, approval of 2015-16 Employee Group Health Program. Uh, Dr. Stock. Mr. Cox, will you come and present that item, please? President Husbands, uh, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, I'm here tonight to uh, present uh, the proposal for the 2015-2016 Employee Group Health Program. Uh, I recommend the Board of Trustees approves the employee medical coverage rates for the self-funded health insurance program. You'll recall that we approved the new health plan uh, this past, past year. Uh, we've implemented it now this year and we're, we're seeing re the results. We do have a need to raise premiums. Uh, and in consulting with uh, uh, Aetna, they, they indicated that we needed to raise our revenue to $38.5 million. Uh, this is the proposal that we've put together working with Aetna. Uh, you can, I want to walk through this. You can see the green column represents the 2014-15 costs of our employees would incur if we were in TRS mm -hmm. and they took the basic, the, the primary comparable plan in TRS to us. This is the one we benchmark against year after, uh, each year. And you can see that, uh, and this assumes that CISD contributed $396 per month to that plan, that the employees would pick up the balance. And I want to tell you that I don't have I don't know what every district contributes, but we've done a lot of, of study in this area. I'm very confident that CISD is contributing well above the ad, average contribution. I'm not saying we're the highest, although I don't know of too many that are higher than us. Uh, but we're well above the average in terms of contribution per employee per month. Uh, and, and you can see what the, the rates would be under TRS2. Uh, if we were contributing 396, as you can see, the, the beige column uh, is what our employees actually paid, and you can see it's well below what they would have paid under TRS2. And the yellow represents the proposal for this coming year. We did have to increase the employee and spouse. We, for, we obviously had bad numbers for employee and spouse last year, and we, we underrated that. Uh, we, we, this doesn't make up the full difference, but it makes a good move towards uh, adjusting that. But you can see that we would be moving the rates up. We also will be moving up the contribution of the district from 396 to 428. Mm -hmm. We will stay well ahead of uh, most districts. As you can see on the right-hand side, this, this scenario will create CISD funding of $24.5 million <coughs> and employee funding of $14 million. That's a 64-36% split, roughly, uh, for a total of $38.5 million. Now, that's based on on the current enrollment in the plan. That, that enrollment will go up because we will add teachers, but it'll go up proportionately. Uh, so the, it, should be, uh, it should be workable. Uh, we still think our employees are going to have a very favorable plan. Uh, but we are having to make an increase, and this is the increase that was recommended by it. Any questions? I, it, um, do I have a motion? No. A motion. Second. And a second. A any questions? Discussion. Discussion. Yes. What, what was our increase yet last year? Well, last year we threw out the old and started from scratch again. That's right. And in fact, we actually didn't ins we didn't really have an increase last year uh, because we had we were very optimistic and we believe we have a good plan. Let, let me just mm -hmm. reinforce that. We believe we have a good plan. We still need to tweak it some. We're, we're finding some areas that that it's not working as great as we thought it would. 
Well, we basically didn't raise rates last year. Sure. And then one, and one, I think like an employee in spouse, we may have dropped rates. Uh, probably a mistake. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, but but we really didn't make an increase last year. Besides the premiums, or any of the specifics going? No, there are no changes. We're changing that. Yeah. Okay. I will tell you that the the, the high deductible uh, health plan there's it's closed to new uh, enrollment. It has been closed right. for a couple of years. Uh, we leave it open because it's an H HSA, uh, and we don't feel that we should pull that away from the employees that are in there. But we're not we're not taking new enrollment in that plan. Yeah, that's all. Uh, Mr. Cox, um, the ACO network being limited to Memorial Hermann, right? It, ACO. Yes. Okay. What I don't understand is the limited network. Uh, I understand there are slight variations within the deductibles and such, but I don't understand a limited network costing the same thing as the base tier two. Okay, I, I, usually when there's a there's a range of plans, the more well, if, limited. If you, look, if you look in there, you'll see the benefits are better under that cost. Well, if, yeah. even so. Uh, I just, in better or relative, four hundred dollars on a deductible is frankly, I, I, I just don't under, I don't understand that concept. Uh, I, it just as a general rule, when you offer a multi-tier plan, there, there's a price, there's a reason why well, you're accepting the more limited. There's a that. difference in the co-insurance, ten mm -hmm. percent versus thirty-five percent, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and that's just a matter of how quick you get there. Not really uh, so much, uh, in, in very little out of pocket, thirteen hundred. Anyway, I, I was just curious about that. Also. Um, how does the ACO network is there a, is there cost sharing with Memorial Hermann if we have good loss results? There's profit sharing, yeah. Profit sharing. Or, or some there is a sharing agreement. Now, now have we ever experienced, or is this just the second year in the plan? This is our first year in the plan. Well, okay, this is our first year. Yeah. <clears throat> and so when when do we know whether we share in that? Because I, w I wasn't sure how many the Aetna whole health shows all the employees in tier one or two, does it not? It broke out the HDHP, but it did not yeah. split those. I don't know how many of the employees or what our specific loss results well, were. They move they move back and forth depending on who they go see. In other words, if they go see somebody in the plan or out of the plan. Let me, let, let me clarify. An employee picks one of those tiers a year. No, they have both tiers available to them. And if they go to, they, they can go to St. Luke's Hospital, but it's going to be tier two, you know. But if they go to Memorial Hermann, then it's tier one. Yeah. Okay. Then they can go in and out of the plan. Then, then uh, that answers my first question, and 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 explains that it's not really a tier, uh, you know, a, a step a up plan. Uh, the next question I have is. Um, Reference-based, frankly, it's just something I just learned about. Reference-based reimbursement. Okay, um, our program is administered by Aetna, and my understanding is Aetna reviews claims on a TPA basis that reviews hospital claims of twenty-five thousand dollars or more. Yeah, I don't know if you know that or not. I don't know if that's the actual figure for our plan. I can't really answer that, but that's just the general rule. And I was wondering if that's negotiable, if we could get them to review because, I mean, generally there is overcharges across the board in PPO networks, okay, and this reference-based reimbursement is all about defeating those costs, yeah. being reviewed by professionals. Now, I'm not, I'm not sure who reviews Aetna's over $25,000 claims, but for example, you can have it done $5,000 or more claims if you have an independent TPA. Have we ever, have you ever heard that reference to that from Terry or from anybody else? And, and is it an option that we would negotiate our, you know, the claims that we had reviewed so we would find out if we're being overcharged, if you're with me? Uh, I'll have to look into that. If you would, please. I, I'd like to, I'd like to hear back from because you understand it's not the plan that I'm, I'm yeah. I understand. But the, call, the there's only a couple of ways to contain costs, and that you know, and there's deductibles and costs and drive the costs up, 
and, and, and limit you, you usage and utilization, or you try to contain the, the cost that typically are overcharged if in a video network. that down for me? Oh, oh, I'll, Paula, I'll, Paula I'll, got I'll it. I'll tell you what, I got it right here for you. Paula, I got, Paula it right got it as well. Uh, so, uh, trust me, trust me it, is, uh, it is very important, I think, in, in, in controlling our costs. Again, I think it's more than fair. Trust me, I mean, you're still out of the market. Look at TRS. I mean, you're still out of the market to the benefit of the employees. Well, I do not know, out of the market I do know that, that Edna challenges, and in fact, we have several under investigation now of claims. Yes. But I do not know what level it is, and, and I will have to. I heard some remarkable figures today. It, 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 it surprised me. And so, I, so I'm, I'm not I'm telling you, I, I'm in the health insurance business, and I did not know about this before today, so nor did I expect you to. I thought maybe Terry was here and, and might have uh, known, but I, I would like us to look into, you know, again, it's about controlling our costs, not about taking something away from employees or charging them more. It's about saving us money, you know, on claims. So thank you. And any other questions? No. And a motion and a second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you very much, Mr. Cox. Uh, item uh, 6B. Dr. Stockton, banking resolution uh, extending the de uh, depository contract. Yeah, I'll ask Mr. Cox to go to the other podium. <laughs> Before we begin, I'd just like to make a statement for the record. I will not be participating in this discussion nor in the vote because I have a personal conflict of interest in the fact that my employer is the depository, so I'm just going to sit here <laughs> and abstain and abstain from the vote. Thank you. I recommend the Board of Trustees extend the existing bank depository contract with Wood Forest National Bank, Mr. Sanders' employer, uh, for a two-year period commencing September 1, 2015 and ending August 31, 2017. The depository contract must be re renewed every two years. Our original contract was awarded uh, to Wood Forest National Bank for a two-year period commencing September 1, 2013. And ending this August 31, 2015. A school district and the district depository bank may agree to extend a depository contract for two additional two-year periods. This is the first of two optional two-year extens extension options that we have. I recommend that you approve the extension. Motion. Second. Any discussion? Yes, why? Any questions? <laughs> why? Well, because we have a, a good arrangement, uh, we pay no fees, and in this environment right now, that's a that's an excellent uh, proposal. Uh, you know, a lot of districts are not generating enough interest to put, to cover their cost of banking. Uh, in addition, they give us good service, and uh, we we have a good relationship. That's all I need. <laughs> Thank you. Any other uh, questions or discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign, and all abstentions, like sign. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cox. Mm -hmm. uh, item 6C, uh, consideration of the use of the eminent domain to condemn property. Request of the board approval of the resolution, Dr. Stockton. Mr. Cox, please. I recommend the Board of Trustees approves the use of eminent domain to condemn property and approves the resolution confirming the existence of a public necessity for the district to acquire fee title to property for use in the development, construction, and operation of a new high school. The district currently has a portion of a proposed high school site in the Oak Ridge feeder zone under contract. The land to be acquired by eminent domain and referenced in the attached resolution will complete the proposed high school site. Funds will be provided from the capital projects fund uh, this is a very critical project, and I recommend that you approve it. Uh, I move that the Board of Trustees of Conroe Independent School District adopt the resolution declaring the existence of a publicly necessary necessity um, for the construction of a new high school campus and authorizing the acquisition by adoption, purchase, or exercise of the power of eminent domain of property and property interests necessary for such school and authorize the use of the power of eminent domain to acquire the fee simple title to the property described therein. 
such property being a 45.98 acre tract of land located in Montgomery County School Land Survey, abstract number 350, Montgomery County, Texas, being particularly described by meets and bounds, Exhibit A to the resolution for use in connection with the development, construction, and operation of a new high school campus. We have Mr. Motion. President, I second the motion. And we have a second. Uh, any questions or discussion? I have uh, one. Um, the, and, and I just basically I want it on record, okay, that how many tracks and how many times have we tried to find a track big enough for a high school campus? I mean, you know, it, how many tracks did we look at or go to or find out that they weren't suitable or they, you know, whatever? We pursued a, a site which, as you know, is going to be 65 to 70 acres at least uh, in this area for three years. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we, we visited with every developer uh, in the area and, and looked at every piece of property. Uh, we, we could not, we, we found one developer willing to work with us, which was Toll Brothers. Uh, <clears throat> others were willing to work with us, but not on acceptable sites. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, at the time we started talking to Toll Brothers, we thought that they would be able to deliver this site land as well. Uh, it ended up not being, not coming to pass. They could only deliver half of the property we need. So we now, uh, are, and we did pursue this property, uh, but we were unable to uh, have any successful negotiations. And therefore we are now, we, we are going about it in a very professional manner. We we have hired, a, uh, we have a top flight uh, appraiser who has put an appraisal together and we're, we're, we're making a very fair offer for this land. And Mr. Cox, just to clarify, with eminent domain, we're not taking the property, we're offering them the fair market value of the property according to the appraisal that we have of the fair market exactly. value. Exactly. And actually, actually, it's a, it's, they have an appraisal, you have an appraisal, and it's a, it's an independent panel that chooses what that Mm -hmm. some, some, probably some, some compromise between the two. And, and we may, uh, we're, we're making them an offer. We hope that we uh, resolve the issue even before that. And last but not least, in this eminent domain, and, and part of the problem, of course, in that fast growth area of the Oak Ridge feeder zone, uh, we're not condemning or eminent domaining anybody's home. This is raw land as it stands, which is even harder to find than 70 acres, okay? Exactly. Okay. Additionally, I, I want to note, because I've asked several questions about this throughout the process, being a new board member, I want it on record that this is less than 10%, correct me if I'm wrong, than their total land that we're condemning, and we have backed off of certain areas in order to give them even more marketable financial benefit to keep certain pieces of land that will be of more financial benefit to them that, later. That, that's exactly right. Okay. The, the toll, the piece of the Toll Brothers property that we're taking fronts on the on the Grand Parkway. This piece that sits next to it, we backed off 300 feet so that they could keep the frontage road. Right. Uh, and same principle in front of College Park. Right. Exactly. It's same same, as exactly. same situation. Exactly. We, but we have the, gone to great lengths from my questions and discussions with you and Dr. Stockton to do everything in our power. And so this is not a measure that has been taken lightly That's by correct. the board. Any other questions or discussion for Mr. Cox? No. <laughs> all right, all those all right. in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed like sign. Thank you very much, Mr. Cox, for uh, entertaining our questions and, and for your hard work on that project. Thank you. Uh, item uh, 6D. Approval of 2015-16 Employee Dental Program. I recommend the Board of Trustees approves the optional Employee Dental Insurance Program. Uh, the current optional dental program for Conroe ISD consists of two plans, a MetLife Fully Insured Dental HMO and two, an I, the IMA Self-Funded Reimbursement Dental Plan with maximum benefit amounts. We. 
at the request of our, of our HR department, we uh, looked at some other options because the, the, the IMA program, which was a self-funded reimbursement, uh, really was not providing the service level that we were looking for. Uh, and in this process, uh, Aetna brought several proposals, well, we, we got various proposals, but we ended up uh, selecting a proposal from Aetna which included replacing both plans and in each case providing better benefits to our employees. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the plans, uh, the Employee Benefits Committee is recommending that both plans be converted to Aetna. Aetna has proposed plans with improved employee benefits, broader network, lower employee premiums, and our administrative fees, along with the improved service that we were looking for. Uh, the Benefits Committee approved the proposed changes on May 13, 2015, by a 100% vote. I recommend that the board approve this change. So I move. I have a motion. To second. A second. Got a second. Okay. Any discussion? No. Questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like <laughs> sign. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Great job. Okay. Item uh, 6E, financial reports, Dr. Stockton. I'll invite our Executive Director of Finance, Baron Rice, to the podium. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. I'm here tonight to present the financial statements for the district for the month of April. These statements will include the general fund, its service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we're going to look at this evening is the balance sheet for the month. The balance sheet includes our assets liabilities and fund balances for the district. In the assets section, we always like to look at our cash and investments and, 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 and see where they are. We'll, we'll concentrate on the general fund since it is our largest fund here. Uh, general fund has cash on hand of $500. Bank deposits of $71,750. Sounds wrong about that. <laughs> we have invested in our external pool funds roughly $96 million. Uh, with Capital One, we have invested uh, $99.6 million. And our long-term investments, a little over $57 million invested there. The next uh, statement we'll look at is our balance sheet. The balance sheet has our assets, our liabilities, and the detail of our uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> income statement. There we go. <laughs> Clicked the wrong way. Uh, the income statement has our revenues and expenditures. The, our, our revenues are made up of local and intermediate sources state program revenues and federal program revenues. But we'll look at the local and intermediate sources since that is our largest source. Uh, the largest uh, generator of revenues for the general fund and debt service fund is in property taxes uh, and food service. It's from food sales and from self-funded insurance. It comes from premium contributions. I'd like to uh, since we had some questions last time on child nutrition, just kind of explain a little bit. If you look at the excess of revenues over expenditures, right now it shows $2.5 million. I would just like to say that in child nutrition, they, they earn a lot of revenues right now, but after May, they will not be earning any more revenues, and, they, and we still pay our employees over the summer. So they're 10 month employees, but we pay them over 12. And they also have not received uh, their, insur their uh, utility bills yet. So we charge them once a year. At the end of the year, it's okay. roughly a million dollars is about what their charge is for utilities. So, and that will so you're saying it's a timing thing. You have it's a build a up right now. So, so on an average year, let's, let's take out that, that, that the, 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 a little what, spike right now. Correct. So, yeah. so what, do you, what would be the? It's probably going to be about a million bucks. A million bucks? Yeah, about a million okay. bucks. And you reassure me that the, the fees that we charge for lunch are as low as, as, low as we possibly low as we can go. And the reason that is is because we do receive money from the federal government, and they require that if they're going to reimburse us for that much, we have to at least charge our normal meals that same price. Understood. Uh, projected fund balance for general fund, not much change since last month, looking at uh, an increase of about $14.1 million. Uh, as we've discussed, our tax collections are coming in, so uh, this has the assumption that at the end of the year we will find that we have some excess fund balance, so this does show the transfer to debt service of $16 million. So I kind of took that liberty so we can show exactly uh, what that will be is about $14 million increase. Uh, Self-funded insurance, for the month of April we had total revenues of $2,947,000. 
total expenses of three million four hundred and seventy-seven thousand uh, for the month. We had revenues under expenses of five hundred and thirty thousand dollars. For the year now, we're seven hundred and twenty-six million dollars uh, in the negative. Uh, thousand. Seven hundred twenty-six thousand. Right. You said million. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wanted to correct that. That's on tape. That's on tape. So I wanted to yeah, make a yeah, seven hundred twenty-six thousand. <laughs> I do. I do want to add. <laughs> now, well, just Edna went back and reevaluated our funding level after we got this number, and the number that we used was based on this number. So, yeah, we just, this just, okay. and we actually had to up our premiums as a result of that. I'm, cover that. I, I'm just curious. Is there? I mean, I'm seeing certain trends of certain months have negatives and others. Have we noticed? Is that yeah. common that those same months? Yeah, summer's good, summer and spring break and, 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 and winter vacation. But April's not spring break. Well, I understand, but the, well, I didn't say it couldn't happen. Well, March, well, I'm, March, I'm, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay, so then the claims, so then the claims so coming in in they're April they're from they're spring delayed. break and March. Yeah. Okay, I'm just... Delayed reaction. Yeah. Got it. Our $109 million bond transition plan, we've currently expended and encumbered $77 million of, of that. Uh, we're estimating another $29 million to complete the programs uh, for a total of $106 million. That'll leave us with some contingency of about $3 million in the plan. Our investments for the month, we ended March at $383 million. Uh, at the end of April, we have $350 million invested. The wham of the pools in Capital One is one day, yielding uh, almost 18 basis points. The wham of our long-term investments is 747 days, yielding almost 87 basis points. And the wham of our combined portfolio is 105 days, yielding roughly 27 basis points. And the benchmark for school districts is the 90-day T-bill, and it's just barely over one basis point. Very good, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rice. We appreciate it. Um, good job. Item uh, 10A, uh, cons considerate waiver of uh, two reading policy requirement and adoption of revision to local policy DIA, FB, and FFH. Dr. Stockton. Oh, Mrs. Gladys, I'll ask you for, to do the last two items. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. This particular item, we're asking you to do something that we rarely ask you to do, and that is waive your board policy requirement, BF, that says that before a policy is adopted, we'll read it twice, once presented to you as information, and then the second time present it to you for adoption. The reason that we're asking that it be waived for these two particular policies that we're making not really a, a, a substantive change in the sense that we're not changing the rules of the game, we're merely wanting to put the correct name of the person that holds the position of Section 504 coordinator in these policies. It currently has a former employee's name, and we would like to have that corrected so that our policies online are accurate. So I would ask that you waive the core requirement of BF and then go ahead and adopt DIA, FB, and FFH this evening. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I, I just uh, one clarification. We're not putting another employee's name in there, are we? Or are we just yes, putting a title? No, we're putting a name. Um, the federal regulations require a real person to okay, in there. Right. Otherwise, we that would was, not. That was my question. I didn't understand why we couldn't just put a title so we didn't have to keep coming back to the board anytime it changed. It, it, it's but nonsense. But you answered but, it. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Sanders. I had the same thought. Good point. Any other questions? Discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. And we. Uh, Passes uh, item uh, 10B, uh, except for review revisions to local board policy DEC. Ms. Glass. Thank you, Mr. Husband. It seems like I think we bring this policy to you on an annual basis. It always needs tweaking of some sort. But the changes that we're recommending this time really are the product of a committee that's been working on them for two years. And the goal of the committee was to try to find ways to improve. Um, or reduce the number of um, leave days our employees are out at the same time to take make sure our employees are cared for in times of need 
And then to be sure our employees are in the classrooms teaching our students because we all know that when there isn't a teacher in the classroom, it really is lost. Instructional time is fabulous as some of our substitutes might be, particularly when it's on a long-term basis. And so over the course of two years, the committee um, looked at various ways um, of, to try to achieve those sometimes conflicting goals. And what we've come up with was the list that's in your item tonight. Um, we're making some changes to aligning definitions. Um, we've tightened our definition of what a catastrophic illness is. That's the definition that we use when we determine um, whether or not an employee qualifies for a sick leave pool. And that is only after all of the other leave that they have available to them has, has been exhausted. Um, we're revising the order in which days are used if employees don't designate. State law says we can't pick what, you know, what type of day you use, but we've, we've kind of reordered um, that to make it easier for them to use the ones that they cannot accumulate to let them, those come off the top first. Um, we've provided additional guidelines for administrators to use about approving discretionary leave. You know, we can't ask people why they want um, days off, but if it's a discretionary reason, um, we have some parameters in place that would allow you not to, for example, during, before, star testing, before holidays when it's difficult to get subs or having substitutes makes um, the business of the district hard to keep going forward. We never really before addressed in DEC um, paid vacation days, which we do give a group of our employees, and so we've added that into this policy. Um, We've had some concerns about our non-exempt employees not using the days for which they're not paid within the fiscal year, and so we've added clarification to that, that for the days that they're not paid, they must not work them during that fiscal year um, that they're given to them. And then we've also added a little bit of clarification to our neutral absence control policy. And so I would present those to you for information. I'll be asking to adopt them at your meeting in June. Do I hear a motion? To adjourn. I was going to say we don't have to vote on this. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll vote with you. <laughs> sorry. I apologize for review. But you can. A motion to adjourn. Second. We, uh, I have a motion to adjourn, and oh, so second. we stand. Absolutely. Good, Good job. Good job, sir. Second. Second reading. Yeah, I thought maybe we were just going to skip the second reading on this. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to introduce myself.